here tonight if it wasn't for Kip and Elena. Come on. We got to a point over the Kip. I was one of the first people Kip asked to go to Portland. Wow. And I didn't have the faith to go. He was my friend. He was my disciple. Come on, John. Come on, John. I didn't have the faith to go. Man, I said, oh, God. Come on, John. But I thank God that Kip's friendships don't have timetables. Come on. I called Kip up and said, man, I've been on sabbatical for four months. He opened wide his arms. He said, let me fly you to L.A. Come on out here to L.A. I said, no, 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 I don't want to come to L.A. right now. I just want to tell you I'm sorry. It's been 14 years. Wow. When I said I was, I was studying out uh, uh, just, just unconditional love, and it's been 14 years. I just want you to know I love you and respect you again. Wow. And he left on a missionary trip, and uh, he invited me to come to the winter workshop, and I just said, no, I'm not ready to go to a winter workshop. Come on, bro. to be forgiven, yeah. but I wasn't ready for a win. <laughs> I needed some more sabbatical. <laughs> Kip didn't give up on me. Yeah. He and Elena kept praying for me and Emma. When they got back from the missionary trip, uh, they had us over to their house for dinner, and, and they made us feel the most incredible, unconditional love that I've wow. ever felt in my entire life. Yeah. I ready to go back into my business career. I'd given up on the ministry. I thought I'd never preach again. Oh, wow. Kip said, you still, Kip said, you still got it, man. Yeah. We went up on Mount Shalom and, and we cried and uh, um, Kip studied with me. Then he had me study with all the young interns in the L.A. church. <laughs> young 21-year-olds teaching me about persecution. <laughs> now, man, do you know who I am? <laughs>
uh, Kip was, uh, and Elena were working with us, Michael called me more than anybody. Wow. When I left the ICLC, my phone stopped ringing. Wow. I didn't have a friend in the world. Wow. And Michael called me, oh, prayed Michael. for me, oh, reminded me that I still had have phone for that. And I told Michael, I said, you know, if there's anything I could ever do for you, just let me know. Amen. It was interesting how he got me here to speak at the Euro. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been minding my own business, doing my ministry in L.A. Michael calls me up, bro, you believe in free speech? I said, absolutely I believe in free speech. <laughs>
my relationship with God. Preach! As disciples of Jesus, we can never say, I don't need you. Paris, you need London. Amsterdam, you need Ireland. London, you need Los Angeles. Boston, you need Manila. You need Australia. Brothers and sisters, we need each other. Amen. You know, we've got to live the conviction and understand the good old saying that united we stand, divided we fall. Be assured of this, if we're not united, we will fall. How do you guys like this room? Nice, right? You know, I, I particularly like the lighting in this room. I like the blue lighting over there, the blue responses. I really like the recessed lighting over here and, and over here. And, and, and the reason these lights are not able to hurt us is because they're not focused on one point. Come on. Right. Right. But if you take these lights, and we're described as the light of the world, right, church? Yeah. And you intensify them. Come on. And you focus them on a single point. Come on. And you turn up the, the, the volume and the intensity to laser level. Come on. They can break through a wall. are the same way. Yeah, right. yeah. When we come together, when we intensify our light, when we focus ourselves on what we're going to do like we just did come with on. the Crown of Thorns project, we can break through walls and conquer Egypt. What's our model? You know, I love the book of Acts. You know, the disciples in the book of Acts evangelized the world yeah. in their day. In Acts chapter 2, you, you find that, that the, the disciples there uh, were, were constantly together in one accord. Yeah. That word one accord means homo thamadon. It's a very unique word in the Bible, and it's only found 11 times in the New Testament. Ten of those times, it's found in the book of Acts. Wow. It's a compound word made up of two words and two phrases. The first is to rush along. The second is to rush along in unity. In unison. How many of you like music? Yeah. 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 You realize that of the 37 trillion cells in your body, every one of them Respond to music through sound waves. Right. Wow. Yep. Come on. Yep. Amen. Homo thymodon carries the image of a musical conductor. Christians are the notes, differing notes, harmonizing together in perfect pitch, in perfect tone. We're the instruments of the great concert in the Master's wow. Come on. hand. Come on. Unity was the reason the gospel was preached around the world wow. in the first century. How many of us want to do it again? Yeah. Let's get over to our text in Hebrews chapter 11. Come on. Come on. I was told I could go as long as I want. <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't Kemp that gave me that instruction. It was Mike. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. And what more shall we say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quits, quits the fury of the flame, and escaped the 
edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Amen. Stops the narrative and stops talking about what people did and just start mentioning names. There's so many incredible people of faith, we don't have time tonight to talk about all of them. We do have time to talk a little bit tonight about David. You know when it says that they administered justice and conquered kingdoms. That's a direct reference from 2 Samuel chapter 8 and verse 15. Where it says that David was a king who was a king of justice and did what is right before the people of God. Amen. The Bible is lavish. In its display of David and David's life. Yeah. You know, in the New Testament, you sort of get to see a glimpse of leaders. You get to see their leadership style. You get to see uh, the, the, the call that they had to leadership and how to conduct themselves. In the Old Testament, you get to see the man. Yeah, that's right. God doesn't leave anything out, and I love that yeah, that's right. about Old Testament leaders. And David, certainly no exception. God saw in David a kingdom conqueror who was a kid. Where are my kid kingdom conquerors at? <laughs> Look over in 2 Samuel for our text. United Kingdom conquers all kingdoms. We've got two points tonight. The first one is, unity creates community. <laughs> unity creates community. And then secondly, unity creates opportunity. We pick up here in 2 Samuel in chapter 5. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron. And said, we are your own flesh and blood. In the past, while Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel in their military campaigns. And the Lord said to you, you will shepherd my people Israel and will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a compact with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king. He reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned over all of Israel for, or, and Judah for 33 years. Amen. You know, we find here in 2 Samuel 5, where God's people are coming out of an intense civil war. Israel has faced years of domination from the Philistines, some 400 years of domination. The 12 tribes of Israel are deeply divided. The 10 tribes in the north, the two tribes in the south, Benjamin and Judah. Israel is experiencing a time of incredible difficulty in its history primarily due to division. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 3 that the house of Saul grew weaker while the house of David grew stronger. Saul is had the spirit depart from him. God says, I regret that I even made you king. I wonder tonight if God has any regrets wow. about anyone here. Wow. I wonder if God regrets making you a Bible talk leader. I wonder if God regrets making you a women's ministry leader. I wonder if God has any regrets here tonight. David wow. 
leads to north end, or that leads to south end. Later on we find that Saul is killed by the Philistines and falls on the sword. He's replaced by Ispaseth, who leads and takes over the regime in Israel for two years. Two Enochites come to his palace while he's sleeping and cut off his head. And now there's an opportunity for David to become king. The Bible says here in chapter 5 and verse 1, all the tribes of Israel came to David wow. at Hebron. Wow. I actually like what it says in 1 Chronicles chapter 12 even better. Turn over there with me real quickly. Great. The first Chronicles chapter 12. It describes when they come to David. It says all these were fighting men who volunteered to serve in the ranks. They came to Hebron fully determined to make David king over Israel. All the rest of the Israelites were also of one mind to make David king. The men spent three days there with David eating and drinking with their families and supplying provisions for them. Also their neighbors from as far away as Ishkar, Zebulon, and Naphtali came bringing food on donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen. There were, plenty, there were plentiful supplies of flour, fig cakes, raisin cakes, wine, oil, cattle, and sheep, for there was great joy in Israel. What an incredible time. God's people have been divided for so long and now they're brought back together. Because unity and leadership creates community. Go back over to 2 Samuel. God's people finally want what God wants. It says in verse 2, In the past, while Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel in their military campaigns. And the Lord said to you, You will be shepherd over my people Israel. And you will become their ruler. It's easy for something to escape our notice here about leadership. They say you're bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh. and Not that uh, you are our flesh and blood, but we are yours. Wow. So they understand it's essential that we come back together. And from the beginning, unity was a problem with Joseph's sons, or with, with, with uh, um, Jacob's sons, in terms of how Joseph was treated. And this is a key to unity right here. Unity starts with unity of leadership. Wow. Wow, come over. You know, it's interesting in our family, you know, when we were here in London, uh, we just had two children, Tyra and Jonathan. And, um, you know, when the kids were young, and, and certainly they're the joy of our lives, but, you know, if you have just one kid, you're, you're, you're kind of lucky. <laughs> with, with two or more kids, you have to deal with what is known as... This <laughs> sibling rivalry. Oh, yeah. And you know, my older daughter, Tyra, was just amazing at teasing and picking at my younger son. I would say she was an expert at it. She knew all the right buttons to push. She knew how to get him upset and, and get under his skin. And he would come to me often crying, so upset because his, his sister teased him so bad. So finally one time when Emma wasn't looking, I said, you're going to have to punch her. You're going to have to punch her in the arm, son. And, you know, he looked at 
doesn't mean like, that doesn't sound like a minister talking. <laughs> downstairs and I heard screaming and yelling going on downstairs and, and I started making my way downstairs and then I started hearing names being called back and forth between the kids. And um, my son Jonathan surprised me. Uh, he called her a name that I, I can't repeat. Come on bro. This audience but needless to say I, I was not happy about that name. So I decided to jump in and step around the corner. And I said, hey, don't use that kind of language in my house. And my son looked at me and said, I wasn't talking to you. about God and God's people. Wow. 
They said you led on military campaigns. You fought for us on the front line. You defeated Goliath. Wow. You know what? Goliath could not be beaten by a military man. Mm -hmm. nope. wow. Goliath had to be beaten by a shepherd. Amen. I suggest to you today that only a shepherd could defeat Goliath. Come on. Saul didn't go to fight Goliath because Saul was no shepherd. Come on. Some of us are missing battles because we aren't willing to shepherd. We approach our ministries like we're rulers. We haven't learned how to shepherd. You can't rule what you haven't. Come on, bro. I gotta convince you. I gotta talk on this for a little while. Y'all don't have it yet. There's not enough amens for me. I'm gonna preach on this till I get all the amens that I want. Book of First Samuel, chapter 17. Amazing 
rulers because they're phenomenal yes. shepherds. Yes. Yes. You know, the job of a shepherd is, is, is interesting. You know, by, by day, the, the shepherd uh, gazes over and, and watches the sheep. By night, they gather the sheep and, and they make... Uh, the, the, the makeshift sheep pen by, by stacking by stacking rocks together and sticks and, and branches and thickets to, to go over the fence. But there's always a small opening in the front of a sheep pen. And after the shepherd has, has built the pen, the shepherd himself lays down in that small wow. opening. Wow. The shepherd himself is the gate. Ezekiel chapter 34. I don't hear enough amens. I'm going to hear enough amens. I want to hear You know, one of the uh, gang members in our Metro Heights region, he says, Preach, OG. I'm not an old gangster. I'm calling you an old gangster. I was calling you an old godly. I'm like, oh, God. God speaking. He says, I will save my flock and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David. And he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, has spoken. I'm here to tell you tonight, you can't rule what you haven't shepherded. David was a man after God's own heart. David got God. You know, I, I just had to really get humble about this in my own life. I'm like, do, do I understand God the way David did? Look in Psalm 23. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing enough amens. Just stop after this. Psalm 23. Listen at how David understood God. He was a man after God's own heart. Not only was he after it, I believe David won God's heart. God talked about it long after his death. In Psalm 23, the Bible says, where David says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Amen. For you're with me. Amen. Oh, Lord, your rod and Amen. your staff, they, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Oh. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Is that your relationship with God? Amen. How many of you would love to have a quiet time with David? I mean, you know, Saul had a quiet time with David and the demons just left. I mean, can you imagine David? You're sitting at David's feet. You're laying down with your head back and David is playing the harp for you. Telling you how much he loves you and how amazing you are. Can you imagine David going after your heart? That's going to be my first quiet time in heaven. So y'all get in line after me. <laughs> Unity. Creates community. What an unbelievable community.
community we have. Yeah. And the kingdom. Him. Oh, your bark is bigger than your bite. I tell him. 
And I tease him almost every day now. <laughs> I'm almost over it. You know, I'm, I'm slowing down my teasing a little bit. <laughs> when it comes to that dog, I'm unconquerable. Because he can't get to me. <laughs> and yet there are a lot of unconquerable things that we allow in our lives. Things that have a history of mocking us, yeah, laughing at us, blind spots in our lives that are defeating us spiritually, yeah. impurity, yeah. lack of commitment, yeah, lack of sharing our faith, yeah. lack of giving away God yeah. wants us to give. And these things keep mocking and mocking and mocking us. It's time for some nevertheless Christians. Time for the British to stop mocking us and telling us they're hard to convert. It's time to stop that. You know, uh, on my ride back from the airport, and I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus, but I'm going to throw somebody under the bus. Come on, bro. I tried to. I'm just kind of going through it. And I was riding back, and you know, I'm all fired up to be back here in London, and I'm like, well, bro, how are things going on in the church? Oh, things are going fine, but you know, the British aren't that open. I was done talking about ministry at that point. Wow. I was ready to go into some heavy disciples. Wow. But the women were in the car. Wow. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate what Kip said earlier today. The fields are right now. Yeah. Yeah. Vincent Van Gogh was told, you're a great artist, but you only have one ear. You can't hear. Wow. He replied, you're right. I can't hear. I only have one ear. I don't, and that ear only listens to God. <laughs> David captured Jebba in one day. Nevertheless, in one day, Jerusalem, Jebba became Zion. Wow. City of peace. Wow, wow. A few weeks later, the Ark of the Covenant was brought there. Wow. And God was in the center of his people wow. where he belongs. <laughs> you know, something interesting that I noticed here as well. Um, if you look on down here in verse... Um, <coughs> Look on down in verse 11. It says, Now Hiram king of Tyre sent messengers to David along with cedar logs and carpenters and, and stone masons, and they built a palace for David. And David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel and exalted his kingdom for the sake of God's people, Israel. You know, it's interesting. It wasn't until later that David really realized, you know what? I'm the king. God has placed me over his people of Israel. I I'm the one. And I was talking to my son, Jay, about this. And um, I said, you know, son, it it it's interesting. And, you know, this isn't something you'll find in a commentary. This isn't something you'll find in somebody. Sometimes you just got to read your Bible yeah. and find things on your own.
the God of Israel had made him king. Wow. Come on. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not ready to say definitively. But maybe this was a blueprint to the ministry of Jesus. Wow. Come on. You know, we were told at USC that we couldn't convert students. We said God could do anything. We spent a night in prayer on the campus. We said we can work together. We decided that two regions would share the campus. Wow. Amen. Well, how, how are we going to get along? Great, we're disciples. <laughs> we invited over 2,000 students in one weekend. And as of last week, we baptized four U.S. <laughs> David talked trash back. Look over in verse 8. What kind of trash talkers are we in the kingdom of God? <laughs> That is why they say the blind and the lame will not enter the palace. That's what David said about his enemies. You know, be careful messing with a real man of God. My, favorite, my wife's favorite female artist is Beyonce. Occasionally I have a Beyonce moment. You must not know about me. to wrap up in verse 17. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went down to the stronghold. You know, it's interesting when we unify, when we get united, Old enemies start resurrecting. People don't like what's happening in God's new movement. I don't have time to talk about it. But the Bible says that, that David went to a stronghold. The Philistines concluded, we better get to David now before he gets too powerful. Satan wants to get to us now before we get too powerful. Amen. Wow. Mm -hmm. David went to his stronghold. You know, kids talked a lot about our prayer rooms, yeah. our war rooms. Yeah. Wasn't it awesome at the GLC? Yes. Yes. But what did you do when you went back home? I know what Tim and Leanne did. They went and ripped their closet out. Put a prayer bench in there. Amen put stands for their Bibles, and created a prayer room Amen. right in their home. Come on. But what about you? Where, where's your stronghold? You say, well, I, I don't need a stronghold. I, I, I can just pray whenever I want to pray. Really? You, you're more spiritual than Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Do you realize that Jesus had a war room? Look over in uh, Luke yeah. chapter 21. When David needed strength, he went to his war room. Luke 21. Jesus had a war room too. You know, my war room in L.A. is this little cabana outside. The, the neighbors walk by and look at me like I'm crazy, but that's my war room. Come on, bro. In Luke 21, verse 37. The Bible says each day Jesus was teaching at the temple. And each evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives. Each evening he spent the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives. 
Now look over at Luke 22, one chapter over. Come on. Verse 39. Jesus went out, as usual, to the Mount of Olives. You see, this was Jesus' spot. And his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them and knelt down and prayed. Because this was Jesus' spot. It's no wonder at the most difficult time in his life, he went to the spot. And you can read the rest of 2 Samuel chapter uh, 5 there, but I want to point out one last thing. Turn over there and then we'll be done. Unity creates opportunity. What an opportunity the people of God had to recapture Jephthah and turn it into the city of Jerusalem. That never would have happened without a united kingdom. And what an opportunity to defeat their nemesis, the Philistines, who they had been warring against for years and years and years. And here now the Philistines attack again. David goes to his stronghold. He prays to God. He moves God. God, tell me what to do. And here in 2 Samuel chapter 5, now the Philistines in verse 8 had come and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. And so David inquired of the Lord, shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord answered him, Go, for I will surely hand the Philistines over to you. And so David went to Baal, Perazim. And there he defeated them. He said, As water breaks out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. And so that place was called Baal, Perazim. We find here that the Philistines had gathered in the valley of Raphael. The Philistines had gathered in the valley. David prays and he goes to Baal Perazim. They had gathered in the valley of Raphael. David goes to Baal Perazim. Okay. Baal Perazim means the master of breakthrough. Wow. Y'all are saying amen. Yeah, I'm saying wow. amen. 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 called it the Valley of Raphaim. Come on, John. Ooh. David called it They all Perazim. Come on, my friend. Come on, bro. Y'all still didn't get it. Wow. Say that one more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. The Philistines yes. called it Raphaim, the valley of Raphaim. <clears throat> David goes there and calls it Bel Shlael Parazim. Why is that important? Yeah, come on. Before one sword was drawn, David said, this place is the master of breakthrough. Wow. He called it the master of breakthrough before the battle. Wow. That's point. You know, when we decided that... Alive in 95 would be alive in 95. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
We called it alive in 95 and 94. Amen. What are we going to call London next year? Tonight. What are you going to call your region tonight? What are you going to call your Bible talk tonight? You see, we're, we're a united kingdom committed to conquering kingdoms. My wife is telling me to close right now, and I will obey her. Look over to John 17 real quick. Let's close where we started. Let's close where we started. John 17, verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message. That all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they be brought to complete unity so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them, you and me. May they be brought to complete unity so that we might conquer the kingdoms in our generation. Amen. To God be the glory. God be the glory. Amen.